Hi folks and welcome to another YouTube video from me, Jason Rose. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a different video. I'm going to be focusing on another instrument that I love to play, uh, the Irish tin whistle or penny whistle, if you will. The video I'm going to do is a little bit about like tweaks and things that you can do to make the whistles like straight from the shop or whatever sound a little bit better. So I've done a massive long video about like maintenance and like tips and tricks and things on the Ellen pipes. So if you're an Ellen piper you might want to go check that out, have a look. Uh, but yeah, today I'm just going to take a little bit of a run through uh, on a few different things that you can do to make a standard just off the shelf generation or whatever timbers you've got, make them sound, make them sound a lot better. And yeah, and if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit like, hit subscribe, uh, drop a message if you have any of your own tips or if you enjoyed the video. Uh, all Everything helps the uh, engagement algorithms and hopefully help other people find this uh, these kind of uh, bits of information out there as well. So yeah, much appreciated. Thanks very much in advance. And yeah, I'd like just to say like I'm, I'm predominantly an Ellen Piper and I've been playing Ellen Pipes for a number of years, but I actually started on a tin whistle and it still remains like one of my favourite instruments and I've played lots of very fancy, expensive, you know, thousand pound whistles and uh, all that sort of thing. But I've got to say like my favourite sort of whistles that you can get out there are these like standard generations and I'm not sponsored, I'm not affiliated with them, but they're just really um, my favourite uh, whistles. They have like that sort of quintessential tin whistle sound like we think about like you know tin whistle recordings from like the sort of golden age of Irish folk albums like the late 60s 70s that sort of thing uh, they always use these whistles and they have a very unique sort of uh, difficult to describe but like a chirp but they're not all made equal and some of them sound better than others uh, that's a story for a different day but if you've just bought one of these or if you've had one in the bottom of your drawer and you want to see if you can get any more out of it and make it into a serviceable instrument, uh, this is the video for you. And yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through like a series of like different things that we can do to hopefully improve the whistle and make it sound better. And then maybe at the end I'll do like a before and after like comparison video so you can hear some tunes uh, on it that I've played well I'll play now in a minute and then I'll do some afterwards I've done all the uh, all the tweaks and stuff so we compare so as far as like the whistles go uh, I just went and bought this one in my local uh, music shop uh, it's just a like I said just an off the shelf generation under a tenor you could probably get them for cheaper online or whatever not a bad whistle it's uh, it's got a couple of nice sort of it's got that nice sort of generation -y kind of sound uh, yeah some people like you can get them in in this like uh, like nickel plated brass with um, uh, a blue top or you can get them like this this is an old one one of my favorites that I've used a number of years it's completely battered um, but this is a uh, like a brass one with a red top I don't actually think there's much difference in in the in the in the flavors in the in the actual way in which they play so but some people prefer the the sort of slipperiness of the nickel some people prefer the roughness of the brass i never i don't really have a preference either way they're all kind of the same out of the box they're a nice whistle but that, that, for me they have a few problems uh one is the upper octave is quite shrill and it's the the volume difference can be like pretty extreme as well so on the tim whistle like you blow softly and you get like a lower octave like a this is a low octave g and if you blow a little bit harder, it pushes it up into the second octave, and you get like a, like a, like, a, like a louder, but also uh, an octave up on the same note. And I find on like the sort of stock generations, just out of the box, they can be a bit, a bit shrill in those upper notes. And yeah, so the other thing is the tuning. So a few notes are a little bit out of tune. And I'll show you a few little tricks as well that you can do um, to help with that. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and get the tops off. Sometimes they can come off quite easily. Like if you give it a bit of a twist and a tug, they can come off. Uh, <laughs> uh, but sometimes you need to put them into hot water for a couple of minutes. So if you take a, put the top into hot water, give it a couple of minutes and then you'd be able to take it off. Uh, it's probably best not to use boiling water. I actually did that one time accidentally with a really nice sounding whistle that was just slightly out of tune. And I put it into boiling water, made myself a cup of coffee. And then when I came back, I did it like all shoveled and melted because it was a bit of an old one as well. Uh, so yeah, so hot but not boiling water. 
<laughs> that's that's my tip for that. Uh, so yeah, let's go do that first. Okay, so a couple of seconds in the hot, not boiling water, and you should be able to take the top off, and that loosens the glue on it. Really, really good to do. Uh, I've got a headless whistle. Um, but basically, uh, if you don't do any of the adjustments and you only do this one, it's kind of a good one to do because it allows you to actually tune the whistle. Because whenever you get them brand new, sometimes they're not quite in tune. Um, it's really easy to do because all you got to do is uh, you have to move the head up and down and that changes how in tune or out of tune it is. So if it's further out, that flattens the that flattens the instrument and then you bring it in that sharpens the instrument and it's basically because you're you're making the overall like length of the whistle like longer and shorter and what that does the longer it is the the flatter the note and then the shorter it is the sharper so if i give this uh, i'm just using a little tuner here which is going to tell me whether it's in tune or not and if i just play a note so that's really flat right Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this down a little bit, bring it in, that should make it a bit sharper. It's pretty good actually. Slightly too sharp, so I'm just going to twist it a wee bit, bring it out. better so that's kind of where this is in tune and it's the kind of thing with the timber so you, you pretty much just like tune it up and then just like leave it and never have to change it again but if you get you arrive at a session somewhere and there's somebody else with a, um, an instrument that's a little bit uh, trickier with tuning maybe a set of villain pipes uh, you, you can always just like tune it up, up to them by bringing it up and down uh, so yeah nice and easy Okay, so tip number two. I'm actually gonna take this off and show you this one. Uh. I've got this in the camera, so you see it a wee bit better. Uh, you can sort of see on the inside there, there's a little bit of uh, like mold lines from whenever uh, this was like molded in. And they're all like the inside in here. And so what you can do is nice and easily. Yeah, you can see it there on the edge. Uh, you go in with like a file and then you can uh, get rid of those so there's nothing like blocking the, the windway or whatever. So yeah, basically what you've got is, I've got like a little, a bit of a battered needle file here, but you can use whatever you want, whatever you have handy. And uh, I'm basically going in and just gonna file it down on the inside. And that should, basically you want it to be like as sort of squared off as possible. You might be lucky, you might have one that doesn't even have this. You might have one that's just fine. It doesn't have any weird mold lines, but uh, this one has, and that's not even a big deal. So basically you're just trying to make like as organic uh, way possible for the air to, to go through it. Um, yeah, just so you're making, you're making that easier. Hopefully you get less like weird harmonics coming through. That should make it easier to play as well. There you go, that's enough for now. Okay, so this next tip's not, it's not amazing to talk about because uh, when you're playing tin whistles, uh, they can get a bit clogged. Uh, it's whenever, if you're blowing into them, your your breath is warm and the, the top of the instrument itself is cold and then that causes condensation in the inside. Now, you don't really get this so much with tin whistles, but it's a good one to do and you'll see why in a second, but you do tend to get it more in low whistles. So if anyone's got one of those, you know, big like, aluminium low whistles out there, uh, when you're blowing into it, you'll see a lot of people like like covering the top and blowing into it and trying to warm it up in their hands uh, so that it plays better and it doesn't clog up. Uh, this tip is for you. So what you need to do 
is get yourself one of these. Uh, it's just like a coffee stir. You can steal one from wherever you want. Get it from Greg's, Starbucks, whatever. Uh, doesn't matter. Just go and grab one and run out. Uh, hopefully nobody will stop you. And you get a bit of toothpaste and just dab that on the end. And then you put that down the down the top of the whistle. And um, what it does on the inside is you're essentially like polishing like the inside of the whistle, uh, like that. And what that does is it's the same as like when you're brushing your teeth, like the toothpaste is like polishing your teeth. Um, but it stops, um, uh, yeah, it's like a little, like a really fine polish on the inside and it stops things sticking to it, like the condensation. So it stops that building up in the inside. And it means that you can play for a lot longer without having to, you know, clear it out or whatever like that. And uh, also it makes it taste a lot nicer. It's minty fresh now. So there we go. Yeah, freshens your whistles naturally. Okay, now this is a really big tip and it's one that I would recommend giving a go at least to see if you like it. Uh, this one, if you look into these whistles, the way that they're made is... Uh, there's like a little cavity on the inside here in this part of it so the air goes in here uh, down the top um, it pops out the top that makes you know and then the rest of the throttles on the windway but there's actually a bit of backlog um, up here on this side here in here and a nice way around that is to just grab some milliput or some blue tack or whatever you've got and just jam it in there um, yeah, so this is just some white blue tag, white tag, I don't know. It doesn't really matter what you use. But basically, there's like, if you look into it, there's like a little cavity at the end and that's what you're looking to get rid of. Uh, where is my pen? I'll tell you what, I maybe I'll use this file again. Use a pen instead, don't do what I'm doing. And we're trying to get like, yeah, you can see it there. So we're trying to get that in there as nice and neat as possible get in there. And so doing that, it basically blocks up that cavity. So whenever you're playing it, uh, the air isn't pushing back in on itself and it's just going straight through and supposedly it gives you a better upper octave, but you can use your own ears and see how you, if you like that or not. But yeah, again, that's one that I'd like recommend giving a go. Okay, this next one, uh, you'll see it on a lot of older whistles. And I think that the manufacturing's probably changed over bit. I only really have this problem with um, when I'm doing these tweaks to like an older tin whistle. Now, it always reminds me of this album cover here. If anyone has this one, maybe like the quintessential tin whistle album or tin whistle duet album. Paddy Maloney and Sean Potts, uh, tin whistles, and they're both playing them on the cover here. And you can see he's got a bit of tape around the top. And the same with Mr. Maloney here as well, a little bit of tape around the top. Funnily enough, I read a review of this album one time, and it was like, one stars. It's all tin whistles. And I was like, yeah, it's just tin whistles. Anyway, yeah, the, the, the problem is, like, on a lot of older tin whistles, they, they tend to crack on the insides. Uh, and when you do that, you've got air escaping, and that's not what you want, because, uh, one, air is very small, it can get through anything. Um, so just a bit of tape. This is just a bit of electrical tape. And again, that's something I like to do anyway, just because it gives you that old, uh, the old tin whistle aesthetic, you know, makes it a bit cooler looking. But basically it's, um, you're kind of just preempting any sort of breaks or anything on that. So, okay, here we go. So it's just some electrical tape. That was altogether too difficult to get off. And it almost fits perfectly around the top. And again, Hopefully you shouldn't have to do that. Looks kind of cool, actually. Okay. And then the last one I've got here, mm, well, kind of the last, is like controlling individual notes. Uh, so this is something you'll see a lot of bagpipers do, and it's something as simple as getting a piece of tape and covering over the notes. And so if I do it just as an example, like something like that, so I've covered over like the top hole with a little bit of tape. And then what that does is, what it does is it means that that note is gonna be uh, flatter. Yeah, so 
It's the same as like half boiling, you know, if you're trying to get like an F natural or whatever. It's the same, the same process. So what you can do is just pop that over the hole and Yeah, so essentially you're making the note, uh, sh uh, making, it, making your note flatter. So you're just bringing the note down and down and down. Um, what some people do in like the piping world is they'll push the reeds like really far into the, the chanters to make them sharper and then tune every note individually. You can do the same on the whistle if you really wanted to, but it doesn't actually make that much a difference. Um, the only note I've found the, that's really problematic on, on these whistles is the, the, C, uh, the C sharp. And uh, yeah, just putting a little bit of tape on the top, like even just like like a little bit like that, is just maybe enough just to just tweak it back into into tune where it's supposed to be. If you want to be discreet, don't use electrical tape. Just use some like solid tape or something that's that's see through. It'll probably look a lot better than you know this here. Um, but uh, yeah, make it look like a nice whistle instead. Yeah, set them with a the tuner and see how, where you want it to lie on that. And then here we are. So this is a few little tweaks and messes around. Uh, yeah, maybe about half an hour worth of playing around just to get it right up to where where I like to have it. And it should just be pretty much like a the same kind of instrument, but just a lot nicer to play and a lot nicer sounding. Um, yeah, I can't really explain the sort of the playing side of things, but it does play better and it makes it easier to play and hopefully a bit more in tune as well. So yeah, um And yeah, let's do like a little comparison video now. So I'll play well, I've got a recording of the of for the adjustments and Actually, a good point. Uh, the little black tape at the top will tell you which is uh, when I'm playing the improved version. So I've got the same tune and I'll just cut between them just so you can have a bit of an idea. Um, yeah, there we go. So this will be the original one first and then I'll cut to this. How it. So yeah, hopefully uh, a couple of wee bits to get you going on the whistle and uh, yeah, help you get more out of like just like a nice budget instrument and just make it a little bit more how you want it to sound. But, yeah, a little bit more premium sounding. Yeah, and like I said, these are like my favorite types of whistles. They give me the exact same sound that I'm looking for when I think about what Tim whistle sounds. And again, like the kind of instruments that I would have grew up learning as well. So yeah, absolutely love these uh, whistles and. You know, it works with a generation whistle, but it'll also work with like a fan or whatever. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you've got like a, a tin whistle in the bottom of a drawer and you're like, oh, I hate the sound of that, so sure, I can't play it. Try a few of these things and see how you get on. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you uh, have any other tips and tweaks. I'm sure there's some stuff that I would have missed. And uh, if you get any good results with this yourself, um, yeah, feel free to post a video, tag me in, let me know, let me know how you get on.
All right, and that's it for today. Hopefully I'll be back. I've got maybe one or two more interesting little videos on Tim Whistles down the line, but uh, I'll probably go back to doing some more pipe stuff in the future. So yeah, if you're interested in that, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the, uh, what is it these days? Hit the little bell, ding, and you can, uh, you can get a little notification whenever I have a new video coming out. And yeah, I'll see you all again soon. Cheers, thanks for watching if you made it this far. All right, all the best. Okay, back again. This is uh, Jason from the future after I've like, finished editing, but I've actually come up, uh, when I was trying to shoot some like B footage, I come up with uh, some, uh, I came across a little tweak that I don't know what's that I've completely forgotten about. Uh, and this is one if you want to make your whistle play a little bit quieter. Um, so what, with this one here, it's kind of like, you can see it on the back here, what could this be? Uh, so this is just a B flat whistle, but. Uh, but what I've done with it is I've taken a file and I've shaved off the little bump on the top there. So normally you have a little bump and I've just like filed it down. Uh, I'll show you on one of these. Yeah, so this is just like a normal D here, but you can see there's like a little bump there normally. And what I've done with this one is I've filed it down. And the reason I've done that is because on the back here, I have a little tape to the back, a little piece of a credit card. That I've just chopped up into like the same sort of shape as that and what you do is you can slide it in and what it does is it uh, it restricts the airway and makes it quieter so if you want to play into the night or whatever play a little bit quieter And it's like adjustable as well, so you can bring it out or bring it in, depending on how quiet or how loud you want it to be. <laughs> there you go, that's your bonus tip. Uh, yeah. Put that one in, uh, but I'm glad I did because it's quite a nice tip, and I'm sure some people will want to be doing some whistling all hours of the morning, and that'll make things easy for them. So there you go. That's your last tip, bonus tip. See you again soon.